Hi, I'm David Carboni, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about mastering in terms of how loud we want our music to be. So it's a really hard thing to know how much should I push my master channel, how loud do I want it to be, how dynamic do I want it to be, and more relevantly in today's age is what LUFS or LUFS as some people pronounce it should my track be at. So modern day production has gotten very different because now the loudness wars is over. It's really all about dynamics. Because we've got mediums like Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music who will level the playing field by analyzing a music over the entire um, section of it and then read out an LUFS level and then turn everyone down to an appropriate or the same level. What they're effectively doing is they're measuring perceived loudness. So while we're all peaking at zero dB, your tune will be played through from start to finish in LUFS meter that will effectively tell you the average volume over the entire time and that is your LUFS level and everyone gets turned down to that. So let's have a look at a tune that I'm working on now and let's talk about how loud we can push or should push the tune. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, a tune that I'm working at and um, effectively I think most of us work this way, right? We get we try not to hit the reds in the in the master meter too much. Um, and when we do, we need to deal with it. Now, the one thing that we need to be aware of is that if, if I say play this tune where it drops in, you can see, you can see there that I'm peaking at plus 2.1. So I'm in the red. Now that's not an issue while I'm monitoring at all because actually the door has an infinite headroom because of the floating point architecture that we use. So you're not actually clipping. Does it sound crap? That's the important question you need to ask yourself. In this instance, I think it sounds fine. So I'm not really worried about that, but now I'm about to export my tune, I'm about to bounce it down. Now we need to worry about it. If I was to send it out like that, there would be major problems. So how loud should it be? What do I do? Now obviously, if you're, let's say if I'm turning this point down just for the purpose of this demonstration, let's say your track is there on your master level, um, you then need to think about, well, do I have room? Should I push? But let's, let's approach it this way firstly. I'm just going to let it loop around in a louder part. Um, so 2.1, what do I do? Does it sound bad? No, I like it there. Cool. So I'm just going to chuck a limiter on. That's probably the easiest thing. We all do. We all have limiters. I'm going to use uh, the FabFilter Pro limiter, okay? Um, now, if we have a look at this limiter over here, it's basically set at zero dB. If there's a red line, let's think of it like a brick wall. Anything that goes over the zero dB is gonna be pulled back. So you can see there that occasionally this red line here is showing us how much it's being pulled back. Not by much. So that's absolutely fine. If I look at my output levels, they look pretty hot, but the tune doesn't sound hot. So that's not really a concern for me. So really the next important thing for me is to work out what else other than what the peak meters are telling me can I take into consideration when trying to work out how loud my tune should be. Now, these are all peak meters, okay? Logic, Ableton, all the doors primarily show us peak meters. They're pretty useless in that just tell us the loudest peak throughout the entire piece that you're playing. So that's just told me that the loudest point is negative 0.00 dB FS. Not really telling me what's going on incrementally within my tune. There's a couple of other meters that we can, we can use for that. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna pull up uh, what we would call a multimeter in Logic. Um, and here is a multimeter. Now, this is gonna tell us three different things. It's going to tell us the peak, the RMS, and the LUFS. So peak, pretty straightforward. We already know that's these levels here. Yeah, they're at zero dB. Um, interestingly, RMS, that's kind of the next indicator we should look at. Maybe the least important, but it gives us a good idea of our dynamic range. So what RMS does is effectively gives you an average over a short period of time. And what that's telling me is that my tune is fairly dynamic. If I sit between negative nine and negative 12 dB RMS, I'm happy with that. Um, it indicates to me that there are enough dynamics in the tune and it's not too hot. 
when of course we're talking about dynamics, we're talking about the difference between the softest and the loudest part. And that's really telling me that, you know what, this tune is dynamic enough, there's enough movement, it's also loud enough, fine. Um, if you were to push, so let's have a look at the limiter here, okay? Um, now, effectively, I've got a gain. So what I can do is I can push that volume into that brick wall, and the more I push, the more it cuts off, and the louder it brings up the entire tune. Not really discussing how limiting works, but it's a little overview. So let's say if I was to push that limiter. So that's 3 dB, and you can see my RMS, my peak is obviously staying at zero, because that's where that red line, that brick wall is set but my RMS is now getting shorter, and that's really indicating there's no dynamics. Let me be stupid. Okay, now the perceived volume is really loud there, but my RMS is actually telling me negative 5.7. Um, so obviously you don't need to be that loud. Let's, let's go back 10, 20 years, and let's assume we're pressing only to CD and vinyl, and we're giving the tune to DJs who are going to be playing it. Then we're really going for loudness. We just want loud. We don't care about dynamics at this stage. So I'm really just trying to push for as loud as I can until it starts to crap out. Well, 6 dB is crapping out. 3 dB is a pretty safe range for me. So you can see the limiters having to do between 3 and 4 and 5 dBs, but they're big transients. It's handling it fine. It's dynamic enough. My RMS has hit negative 6.5. In the olden days, perfect. Give it out. Um, if I look at the actual the mastering peak limiter, it's showing you there's no movement there. It's pretty much as loud as I can go. What's changed now? Well, exactly that. Streaming services have now employed volume leveling, if you like. That's an easy way to explain it. But what they're using is they're using something called LUFS. And LUFS, you can't cheat it. You have to basically start your tune from the start. And then what happens is the LUFS in logic here in the multimeter, it's broken up into two things. There's the sum. And the sum here, this figure here, is just telling me what the LUFS is right now, right this second. Um, and then the integrated amount, that's your overall LUFS level. That's now going up. So that's basically saying to me, well, this is your integrated, this is your final LUFS level. With the limiter pushed at 3 dB, remember I was already hitting kind of above, I've now limited plus push 3 dB, so this is extremely loud. That LUFS is gonna end up at negative seven or six by the time I get to the end of the tune. Now, YouTube, um, and Spotify will level off at negative 14 LUFS. That is, they'll bring your tune down to that level. Apple Music even more so, negative 16. And most sites employ LUFS, not all, but they do. So that means if I'm at negative seven LUFS, I'm gonna be turned down seven dB. Is that an issue? Not really, because most tunes are mastered to be loud. So most tunes will be turned down. But whereas before you would really ram for loudness, those of us that still do are gonna be penalized the most. So we need to keep a, a kind of a check on the peak, the RMS and the LUFS. If I was to say, um, let's say I'm gonna go, okay, do I need to be that loud? I'm gonna be on streaming services. So I'm gonna leave it at plus one, okay? Um, sounds dynamic enough. The peak meters, the RMS meters are fine. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to the start of my tune. I'm gonna open up the multimeter um, and I'm gonna hit play. And I'm gonna cut right back to you when we get to the end of the tune and we're gonna have a look at the figures in the LUFS meter. Okay, um, so I've taken a screenshot of what my um, multimeter tells me and I've put some text over the top so we can, we can have a a quick look. Well, obviously the peak was hitting zero dB um, and the RMS was 9.7 on the left, 9.9 .9 on the right. So remember, peak, it should be hitting zero dB as loud as the peak should be, obviously. I'm going to just say one thing. When you're exporting, do not export at zero dB. 
export negative 0.03. Now the easiest way to do that is just go to your master channel and just turn it down by 0.3, not 3, 0.3, okay? And that means that you'll never ever go over. There's the level, the new level now. That's where you should be exporting. And what that's doing is that's allowing for Codex, which is basically the software that streaming and hosting sites use to convert your music into the format relevant to how they play and stream. It's allowing those codecs some elements for error. If you're at zero dB and a codec takes your music and splits it left and right, does its magic and puts it back together, it will peak and there'll be inter-sample peaks and what you'll hear is horrible distortion. Don't be caught out, we've all been caught out doing that. Negative 0.3 is the absolute maximum you should be exporting in terms of your peak level. Fine, RMS, well we've already mentioned it, between nine and 12 dB um, full scale dBFS um, is the safe and dynamic zone. You can see here in my RMS levels, I'm negative 9.7 and negative 9.9. .9, and that was with me having that fab filter set at plus one. So it was still quite loud. Um, what's nice is my LUFS. Here's the LUFS. The final integrated level was negative 12.3. Well, what does that mean? That my tune will be turned down 1.7 dB on Spotify and 3.7 on Apple Music. Now you remember in the first example when I talked about really boosting and going for that plus six in the limiter, and got a negative seven dB LUFS result. That means that it would have been really turned down a lot. Now, I'm only getting turned down by 1.7 dB on Spotify. And that's gonna put me in the top two or 3% of tunes for loudness because everyone gets turned down. Now, there are instances where you do wanna focus on your LUFS exclusively. So for example, recently we did music for a Microsoft, uh, for E3, for a launch for a Microsoft Xbox game and uh, their specs were negative 24 dB LUFS. That basically means that you don't want your tune going over because if it does, it's gonna be pulled down. Um, so when you're specifically going to a live venue or a one site, like let's say you were only distributing on Spotify, then maybe yes, go for that negative 14 LUFS. But good practice is effectively try and hit this triangle of negative 0.03 dB for your peak. We're all hitting at zero dB for peak, so that's pretty straightforward. Just don't export beyond point, negative 0.03. Look at your RMS, try and stick between negative nine and negative 12. If you're not, don't worry. That's just a good indication of where the dynamic range is. If you're looking for a little bit more loudness and you're negative eight, fine. Negative seven, it's starting to get a bit too much. And now UFS, just try and stick somewhere, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, negative 14. They are safe areas and that's gonna put you in the, in the very loudest of tunes. If you're at negative five, negative six LUFS, which many of the limited dubstep, drum and bass, house and techno tunes of the 2000s were, it's gonna sound really soft, really soft on Spotify. I'm gonna give you a good example here. I'm gonna pull up a document which really gives us a good indication of how music mastered for loudness can be penalized on streaming sites. Okay, I've taken a screenshot here of a couple of tunes um, I'm not going to mention name, but they were names, but they were both big commercial tunes uh, in the 90s. Okay, one on the left is a very famous artist, and um, he really didn't get much play for this particular tune because he wanted it recorded with a lot of dynamics. So on radio, it suffered because this was a heavy metal band, and you can see how loud their music uh, came across. Um, you know, these guys zero dB ran it through a limiter, crunched it. These guys, really nice dynamics, don't worry about pumping too much for loudness, but unfortunately it suffered and didn't get as much radio play. Those two tunes, side by side now, look like this in Spotify. Now you can see how the original one, hitting zero dB, probably had a rating of about negative seven LUFS, has been turned down significantly. Whereas this other tune didn't really have a high LUFS level and actually has survived. So it, now sounds, the tune in red now sounds significantly louder. And that's how your music can be penalized. So it's good practice just to make sure, again, that you're not going above, as I said, um, negative 10, negative nine, negative eight, neg not negative seven now UFS. Good practice, zero dB, negative 0.03 export at, in terms of your peak meters, your RMS meters, try and stick between negative nine and negative 12, and LUFS, Negative 10 to negative 16 really is a good place to be. I've shown you these things in Logic, but there are plenty of good uh, free 
LUFS meters. Um, Ableton also obviously offers peak and RMS metering. Um, hope you enjoyed and hope it helps.